Hey guys, it's Adam from Lazy Guy DIY, and this week, with the help of our sponsor, Dermal Tools, we're going to take this 1920s, 1930s era double basin laundry sink, we're going to clean it up and bring it back to life as part of our laundry room overhaul. So let's get this thing started. So you haven't seen it yet. The sink restoration was part of our scary basement overhaul. So we wound up with a lot of problems, a lot of fixes, and then an awesome looking basement. So make sure you click the link and check it out. So when we first started imagining what we were gonna do with this sink, we were like, oh, you know what? It's soapstone that fits for the period. The house was built in the late 1920s, early 1930s. And we were like, you know what? This thing's gonna clean up awesome. We scrub it down a little bit, use a little mineral oil, and you know the grains and the, and the veins and everything that come out of the soapstone sink would look so awesome down here, nice and dark. Um, it would really go with the rest of the decor, and it's an awesome little piece of history. Well, it turns out, after we looked up underneath, there's a patent number, it turns out that this is actually poured cement. So it's not soapstone, but it still makes it pretty cool um, because it's still 1930s era, 19, late 1920s, so it is original to the house. Uh, so we still love it for that, and it has lots of great features to it, but it is concrete, which means things are a little bit different. Uh, one thing to notice is, it has zinc along the top up here, and they did that to make it more durable. And it actually adds another element that's pretty fun, I think, and adds a little more personality. But we're going to have to clean this whole thing up. Before we did that, we got to check on how we cleaned up the sides. So what's nice is, because this is a cement poured sink, is that it's a softer material and it's easier to clean up. And you can actually use a random orbit sander. So I used 220 grit on this and sand it on the sides. I actually wear a mask to make sure it's well ventilated in here. Don't push too hard though, because it's so soft, you can actually just wear through layers like crazy. So on areas that were a little more difficult, I use sanding sponges. It's easier to bend and then reach. Um, cleans up a little nicer and you have plenty of control on it. But what we did find out though, when we were researching this, is that they actually used to be painted black on the outside. So we're gonna paint this. Uh, don't freak out, I know it seems like it's wrong, but they were painted black back in the 1930s or so. So we're gonna paint it a color that's gonna go along with our laundry room here. So now that I've sanded all this down, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna clean up the top up here. Because at this point, all I'm cleaning up on the inside is pretty much just years of wear and tear and grime and some paint because it is uh, basically a utility sink and we've been cleaning all kinds of crazy stuff in there. I'm gonna be using the Dremel Versa. Uh, it's actually a nifty little tool. It charges with a USB and it's just a rotary tool. It turns right on, spins. Um, I'm gonna use uh, probably a scouring pad here or I have a little brush that I can use as well. And uh, we're gonna put this thing to work and see how well it cleans. To start, I'm using just a normal household sponge and some soap, and I'm trying to scrub off the original layers of dirt. It's just not cutting in here, and I need to use something a little bit stronger. With the scary sponge put away, it's time to pull out the Dremel Versa. What's nice is that it is water resistant, so you can run under water, you can get it dirty, and you can get everything else clean. So let's put it to work. It's important to note is I don't want to use anything with a strong abrasive head. So what I'm gonna do is use a soft bristle brush for a while and then switch over to a scouring pad to really get this clean but not damage the surface. I then switched over to the non-scratch scouring pad and started cleaning with OxyClean on the inside of the sink. You need to be careful what chemicals you're using because chemical cleaners that are harsher can actually corrode the pipe fittings on the sink and then you're in for some real problems. For metal surfaces like the inlaid washboard here or the zinc surround, I ended up using the Dremel Versa and combination of baking soda and toothpaste. Every surface is scrubbed up as clean as it was going to get. I ended up taping my edges, painting my legs with Rust-Oleum Metal Champagne Bronze Protective Spray, and got ready to start painting. For paint application, it just rolled right on. I'm using Bare Premium 4 paint. We tinted it with Key West Green that matches the stencil on the floor, but it took about a coat and a half to fully cover up any of the porous surface. So that's a wrap. One thing to note is that we did end up painting the faucet as well. That's a Rust-Oleum Metallic Champagne Bronze Protective Spray as well. It's holding up pretty good at this point and shouldn't be coming off anytime soon. We're very excited how this one little element changed the entire dynamic of our laundry room makeover. A lot of people end up smashing these sinks out with a sledgehammer, but what you should do is keep them. They're a part of history and they make the room look great. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for Lazy Guy DIY and don't forget to check out the video on how I put the stencil down. Once again, thanks to our sponsor Dremel and I'll see you guys next time.